Hey guys, it's Paul and for a good year in the background as you can see here sat my CR10 Mini. I got it for free when I bought another printer. It was missing a hot end and it was really really in need of well some TLC. So what I'm doing in this video is I, I put together a, a hot end on there but it was never gonna work. So what I did is I decided to modernize this guy and we're gonna talk about the CRT Mini and I'm gonna give you a little bit of history on that right now. So back in 2016, the Creality CR10 came out. It took the world by storm. $399, 300 by 300 by 400. I mean, that was the printer to have right now. No messing with kits. I mean, it just, it was a steal. It was a great price. Now, a year later, roughly, then they decided to come out with the CR10 Mini. Now, the CR10 Mini is priced $40 cheaper, okay? Uh, and it's only 300 by 220 by 300. So, you know, why would you spend $40 less and get so little? So, yeah, the CR10 Mini was one of those that just kind of came and went. Okay, so let's set up some goals here. What do we want to do with this thing? Well, we want to gut the electronics. So we want a modern 32-bit controller. So we're going to use the Big Tree Tech SKR uh, Mini E3 V3, 32-bit, I mean, latest and greatest. And let's get rid of that old screen so we're going to put a tft uh, 35 and that's also from big tree tech uh, i've used this on other machines so this thing will have a touch screen it'll it'll be great now what about for the printer itself well let's get rid of the well we don't i just have kind of a junk hot end that's not going to work so let's use something modern uh, let's use a bontech ddx v3 why bontech well first of all it's the phenomenal extruders and they solve all the problems at once, meaning they include a part cooling fan, they include a BL Touch mount. Uh, I would love to use some of my E3D stuff, but you're on your own as far as mounting it and getting everything set up. So, so that's out. So now that we have that, let's select a hot end. And for that, we're gonna go with the Slice Copperhead. Have another one of these and they work great. So we have the hot end all set up. What else? What would be nice? Well, how about, okay, right now we have one Z axis. Let's go with dual Z axis lead screws. This way we don't have to worry about one side sagging or leading or what have you. So uh, we're gonna put a second lead screw in there. We can get one of those from Tiny Machines. And finally, let's get this printing on a good bed surface. And Wham Bam has some stuff uh, there. Like I said, let's reach out to them and see what they can offer us. So yeah, that's gonna be the goal. Let's get this with a, a nice Wham Bam surface get everything all together. It's gonna to be a lot of wiring, a lot of work, but off we go. Part of the background noise. So I should have started documenting a little sooner. So SKR Mini E3 is in. I still gotta finish sorting out a few wires here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, wires for the fans, uh, for this fan, this fan. Tested them both. Uh, this is the old fan, it was noisy, so I replaced it with a much, much quieter one, so at least it'll be quiet in here. Uh, a new power supply. Uh, the Mini, uh, the CRTN, CR10 Mini is a 12 volt system, so uh, that's what this guy is running right here. Um, and that's what the bed runs. So when it comes to what I'm gonna mount for the hot end, I initially had uh, a DDS. It was called the Tank. It was a predecessor of the, the Bontech product. And now instead, I was looking through my stack of stuff and uh, I have a uh, spare copperhead and I have a whole DDX sitting over here. Got all the DDX parts and pieces here. I got a few things that are on order, but um, so this is uh, the top part of it here, the uh, the heat sink. You see that here? Um, this is the... Uh, uh, the actual copperhead uh, hot block and of course we have the uh, heat break and I gotta I'm gonna put a 0 0.4 nozzle it's a small printer so that seems appropriate for it so I have all those pieces now you can see here that this has room for you know a regular e3d style heater and cartridge uh, I'm not going to use the slice ones because it strikes me as overkill for this machine uh, so I'm just going to use uh, from the E3D I took out of here, uh, I'll just use uh, that thermosistor cartridge and uh, I believe that's a 35 watt heater. I'll have to double check. Can't see it while it's mounted in here. And that'll, that'll work just fine. So 
it's kind of a mishmash of parts, but that's kind of how the whole project is too. Uh, as for the bed surface, uh, Wayabam discontinued the uh, parts they have uh, for this. They did have a magnet, and uh, I'm going to take one of the 310 by 310 uh, beds and I'll probably take it to work and water jet it to, to fit this bed. So uh, that part's taken care of. Uh, I got the BL attached and other stuff, uh, the screen, and all those things. Screen is sitting over here. So that's that's gonna be going in at some point next uh getting some help from keith to be on the firmware so yeah the project continues okay a lot less background noise this time okay so here's what i've done tonight so i got the ddx together um i managed to find again ddx is usually a 24 volt system so i had to fortunately i keep a good stock of fans so this is 12 volt this is 12 volt now usually if you look at other ddx's the air intake for this fan would be on the outside this one that's all I have. It does not. Uh, it pulls in air from the inside here. Uh, I was a little concerned about if where that mount is, if it's going to rub, but I powered it on and no, no troubles at all. So I've got all the uh, cabling ready to go here. I got the thermosistor in blue. This is the heater. Uh, I just have to uh, put the boron paste on there and put the set screw. Uh, there's nice accommodations in the back of the DDX here so I can route all these wires up and out of the way. Uh, I also have to get the BL Touch. Uh, this is the attachment point for that. Uh, speaking of BL Touch, uh, this looks like a lot of cable, but remember, that, you know, the BL Touch has to go all the way from the print head to the back of the machine uh, and to the inside here of the uh, control box. So, having that longer cable is, is going to work well. Uh, some more parts showed up. Wham Bam sent me over uh, the magnetic uh, base, and they don't sell the CR10 mini sized. Uh, pex beds and and th that whole bit uh but they sent me some stuff that's bigger that i can cut to size so i have a couple opportunities there to make a, a good bed uh the other thing that showed up is uh i got that from tiny machines the uh extra z lead screw so by default this would not have a lead screw behind here it would just be a single lead screw and we've seen how that works out usually you have a lag lead situation uh so this thing being dual z will be really really nice so good progress tonight i'm having fun doing it i'm just you know watching netflix while i'm doing all this stuff too um and tomorrow we'll get back at it okay there's a lot to show um so there was a lot of wiring involved so i've got these down i've even got a uh, little shroud here i couldn't make them all fit in the first one so i have two separate ones i've got one uh for the uh, thermosistor and heater i got one for uh, all the other stuff uh, BL touches in. I had to print out the uh, copperhead version, which looks like it's in a size up just right. I hope that's the right one. It's not that difficult to take out, but there's no ability to slide that up and down if I have to. I'll have to remove one of the screws if I do. Uh, yeah, so a lot of wiring, and that's all in. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the wire management. Maybe I'm actually getting good at this stuff. Um, but yeah, I got a little slack here, the BL touch. I, I figured to have a little is fine. Um, plus, it's not really going to be in the way. I can, of course, zip tie this over if I have to. But uh, yeah, so the hot end is is in. Um, God, I'm kind of rambling here a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty happy where everything is. And uh, yeah, a lot of soldering. <laughs> and uh, next up is the uh, second lead screw. But yeah, all the wires, I've uh, labeled stuff as well, too, so I know what is what and uh yeah and then these things are going to uh, uh connect into the uh, uh cable that comes off the back of the control box the cable is fairly long but you know you, you never know so i'm sure i could have in hindsight i'll look at this and go boy i could have made these wires a lot shorter but you know it's it's much easier to have extra wires and, and tuck them away versus not having enough and <laughs> doing more uh wiring and soldering and adding connectors so um yeah it's it, it, it looks good it's at a good spot and uh, it's kind of late so i guess i'll wrap up for tonight and move on okay a bit more wiring uh i had to uh splice into the uh the original connectors are uh a micro molex which i don't have the other half of so um these guys are fine uh but these had the micro molexes so uh, i went with uh, these style jst uh, so this is what it's coming from the box. Let me move that. And then uh, uh, here's what's uh, attaching to the printer itself. And uh, so these 
these and these are the two wires so you can see the other half of the JSD connectors here on this side um, doesn't matter the polarity since uh, one is going to the hot end and one is going to the thermal resistor so uh, another step the next step now I just wanted to get a before picture uh, so you can see we have our single lead screw on the uh, CR10 uh, mini and on this side we don't have anything uh, I have a kit for a CR10 uh, I've got that uh, reality kit sitting in here and one of the things is because it's for a CR10 uh, which is usually a 300 by 300 by 400 machine uh, this also works on the 400 by 400 by 400 which is the CR10 S4 uh, I'll probably have some uh, obviously uh, some uh, lead screws sticking out um, I was thinking maybe I should trim this but you know what I'm gonna leave well enough alone that's fine so on with the next step okay another brief update okay the uh, second lead screw is in and as expected yeah we have some extra um, the cable they, uh, they give you uh, you know this is for a CR10 so for it's for a bigger printer so uh, we've got this this we got the little uh, splitter here and uh, this is gonna go into the control board it's not a very big cable but we'll have to make do so another step done now it's time to delve into the electronics some more okay Juni crickets you're probably thinking what a mess so the uh, second lead screws in I think I covered that in the previous video anyway but uh, I've been doing some testing of the wires um, there are a couple always on fans in here so and the wires in the previous board they had basically taken a bunch of these wires together and shoved them into one of the uh, actually they shoved it into the power uh, intake and with the new board is just too short so I had to put these little extension cords in here so I got the negative here got the positive and oh yeah it's it's a whole bunch of mess um, plugged in the screen the TFT 35 will work the first time um, in here you can see the BL touch wires are in as well as everything else uh, oops sorry uh, I gotta get in there with a hot glue gun to secure those BL touch wires. I did power on the machine to make sure the BL touch turned off and on, and it did. So, hooray! It's a <laughs> this is quite the little custom project here. So yeah, I'm gonna get a glue gun there, and uh, any wires that are held by just friction alone, I'm gonna add that glue to them. And yeah. Okay, another uh, small step forward. The uh, screen is in. When I powered everything up, screen was looking fine. So. And it is, and uh, I'm just double checking connections in here. It's pretty tight fit once this power supply goes back on top. Uh, that's the next step though. Okay, uh, there is only, uh, on this power supply, it's thin, so there's only uh, a hole on each side here. And uh, so that's all there is to it. And we're gonna make sure these wires are safely tucked away before we put the cover on. I suspect I'll have this open and close a couple more times, but <laughs> fingers crossed, right? All right, quick update. So some good news. I got some of the uh, silicone boots. Uh, I've got one for the uh, Mini, and I got one for the, uh, I have a copper head on my CR-10S Pro V2. So I'm gonna get that installed. One of the uh, issues I've had has been the uh, prints keep on stopping after the second layer once the fan turns on, and I think that's because of the contact that fan uh, the airflow makes with the uh, hot end hasn't been a problem on the other machine but we'll see if this is the fix it needs okay i got the machine moved and uh yeah that's much fanfare that's in there and uh as you can see that fan duct is about as low as i dare go so i'll do the uh m306t which is uh the uh Marlin computed uh, I can't remember the whole abbreviation I'll think about it later but basically I got to run that calibration wizard again and uh, that will do the same thing as a PID does so let's see what happens okay some good news we uh, we did some really nice layers we are at uh, We're at a fan rate of 100%, bed 60, and we're holding 200, which is the uh, print temp we're using. And 
not sure how well the GoPro is gonna show that, but getting a really good print. We're doing a test cube to uh, figure out our flow rate. So, and uh, yeah, we're off to a way. Okay, so making really good progress on the CR10 Mini. Uh, it's been doing test prints. I've been using a, a regular 310 by 310 sheet and the bed is, uh, it's 310 uh, by 220. So 310 here, 220 here. So essentially what I needed to do, I could have just simply just cut this, but uh, I didn't really have a good way of doing this very cleanly. Um, this one already has the pack surface on there, so that wouldn't have been great. Now, Wham Bam did send me um, several uh, of these sheets. I'm sorry, several of these spring steel plates uh, that don't have the pecs already. And uh, so I have the, uh, the pecs uh, right here. Pardon the uh, way it glows on my face here. And the other thing is what I did is uh, I was able to get uh, the dimensions and have uh, one of the full size plates uh, water jet. So now I have it down to this size. Now, in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd kept the tabs here because this does fit the bed perfectly. You just got to kind of flip the edges to uh, to get it off of there. And as you can tell, it's spring steel, so uh, I have my fingerprints all over it. So the next step is going to be uh, getting this PEC surface uh, onto the spring steel. And I've got my IPA right here. We'll just put a little general blob of it. Ta -da. Okay, that's a little bit more than a blob, but suffice to say it'll work. And I'm trying to keep my fingers off of it. I've tried this in the past wearing gloves and then the gloves just stick to everything. So there it goes. Also microfiber cloth, um, paper towels can leave some residue behind. And I'm also uh, using the uh, cardboard. I'm using the folded edge here so I can kind of use that to hold down. So wherever I can, I'm trying to make sure I'm not putting my prints on here. And that looks pretty good. Now, the nice thing about doing this is that this sheet is way bigger than the plate. Uh, so regardless of how bad I screw this up, all I have to do is trim it. I can do it with scissors, I have a razor blade over there. Uh, ideally what I'd like to do, I'd like to get the Wham Bam Pex in the lower corner. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and... And I'm only gonna do the first half inch or so. And I'm going to fold this so that basically as I line this up, it's going to be riding on the fold here. And... I'm happy with that. Okay, I think that's good. It's a little over, that's okay. We will pull up some more in the backing, push in the center, rub outward. This is not my favorite thing in the world to do, but off we go. And the thing I can do too is use the Kind of push to the edges any air bubbles that might be there. Right, rinse and repeat here another few inches. Punch you in the middle and push out. I'm sure there are people out there that are in the wrapping industry where they wrap cars and such that can tell me better ways of doing this, but for rebuilding an old printer, this will work. Okay, yep, so I'm at the very edge of what I'm going to use. I the adhesive is going to stick elsewhere, and that's okay. So this part is done. You can see we got the edges here, and time for my little razor blade. I'm gonna get this trimmed up. Okay, well that was a red hot mess. So, it's now sized up and then uh, I have the uh, protective cover. Voila. 
And you can still see a few little edges I gotta clean up a little bit, but that's not that big a deal. So, get that installed on the printer. And there it is, installed on the surface. There's a wham bam. The only thing we're meaning to do is, uh, I'll scuff this up with the, uh, actually I have all kinds of right here. So one of the things you'd like to do is scuff this up a little bit. And I will clean it again. And then we're good to go with the new surface. Okay, print's finished and look at that. That's amazing. Fantastic. Bottom layer. Nice. All right, we're at the end, and here it is. It's it's done, and it's all set to go into a safety enclosure and do a bunch of printing for me. So to those of you that may have skipped to the very end, here's a summary of what we did. So the electronics box, everything in there, gutted, trashed, thrown away. We now have a 32-bit controller in there, which is the SKR Mini E3 version 3. Uh, we have a touch screen over there. That's the uh, Big Tree Tech TFT uh, 35. Now the CR10 Mini is a 12-volt system, so the bed is a 12-volt bed. Uh, as such, the hot end is also a 12 volt system. So what we did is, I say we, me. <laughs> uh, instead of a regular 24 volt heater, we had to use a 12 volt. So we scavenged one from an E3D V6. Uh, for the part cooling fans, they also had to be 12 volt. So we had to find the 12 volt versions of basically the 24 volt fans uh, for the part cooling and the always on. The other thing is I wanted to make this dual lead screw because I hate printers that only have one lead screw. It just is, you always have a lag and lead going on on one side. So yeah, we couldn't exactly find one that fit the CR10 Mini specifically. This is one that would go on a CR10. Uh, so hey, it, it is what it is. Uh, maybe no one will notice that, but whatever, it works. Uh, I'm not crazy about the spool holder. That's one of the stock ones that I had laying around, but that's fine. When it goes inside the safety enclosure, you'll have a dry box for the filament. The neatest part of this, I think, was after we sorted everything out, <laughs> uh, was the bed. Now, Wham Bam Systems, thank you guys. You guys are the best. They sent over a pile of parts. I told them what I was doing, told them I needed some help. They said, no problem, here's some stuff. So they happen to have the right size magnetic bed sheet, which is, that's fine. I mean, I, I could have trimmed whatever they sent me. And then they sent over the spring steel with no coating on it. And I think what they sent was 310 by 310. And then what I did is uh, I had a water jet down to size. Now the one thing I would have done over is I would have kept the tabs in the front because it's a little easier to, to, to grab it with the tabs, but whatever, <laughs> it, it's fine. And then they sent over multiple surfaces. They sent over the Wham Bam PEX, PEI, and they had a uh, polycarbonate surface they offered. And I went with the PEX, so there it is all together, having no issues with adhesion. Uh, prints are going really, really well. This thing has the uh, slice engineering copperhead in there, and that's, that's a really great system. If I was trying to think, is there anything I'm missing? But no, I uh, did a lot of calibrations, and you can see from the test cube, and I did some other prints, those have all come out very nicely. So I'm looking forward to tasking this printer with some very long prints and just letting it go. I, I feel real good about the setup. So that was fun. So Having said all of that, these are the kind of videos that I have the most fun with. I like taking something, maybe yesterday's big old printer, and modernize it by upgrading it. And if those are the kind of videos you like too, let me know in the comment section down below or give me a thumbs up and stuff like that. Because yeah, I mean, there's a lot of new printers. It seems like every three months there's a brand new line of printers, but there's a lot of printers out there that, yeah, they were okay when they first came out, but they certainly could use some TLC. and. Projects like this, I mean, this thing prints amazing. I mean, it's it can print just as fine as all the new stuff. So if you like projects like this, as I do, uh, again, chime in the comment section. If you want to see what I'm up to, check out my social media. I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter. I'm always posting images of the stuff I'm printing, the projects I'm working on. So check those out, follow, subscribe, like, etc. so you can see what I'm working on. 
And that's it for this time. Thanks for watching, and remember, please print safely.